a blessed good morning to all of you, our family and friends. We extend special greetings this morning to the congregation at Chalkingwell Wesleyan Holiness Church and of course the congregation at Lakes Wesleyan Holiness Church. We welcome you to another Sunday morning worship service. We pray that you are blessed.
Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good and His mercy endures forever. And you know what? We are going to rejoice. We are going to give God thanks because no matter what comes our way, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. I'm going to dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. More than victorious. I'm an heir of the kingdom. 
are more than conquerors. We are more than victorious. Hallelujah. No weapon that is formed against us will prosper. And you know why? Because we are heirs and join heirs with Christ. We are a chosen generation called forth to show his excellence. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus.
we are reminded that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we would have life and not just life but have life abundantly and this morning I want you wherever you are to lift up your voices and I want you to say thank you God for that sacrifice that you would have made so many years ago and it is because of that sacrifice that we do not have to live, live defeated lives but we can live victorious
carefully away. If this scripture is true as it is, I want you to understand that there is something upon your head. Upon your head signifies that you have been crowned with it. And the word of God says that the thing that is upon your head is everlasting joy. And I believe that you need to start rejoicing today because you have been crowned with joy. And not only joy, but the word of God says everlasting joy is upon your head. I believe that God is going to bless somebody today as you receive the word of the Lord. He says that the redeemed of the Lord shall return. I believe what God is saying is that those in fact, the word of God tells us that the people of God were carried away captivity. And they were experiencing some difficulty and some challenges. But scripture tells me that God visited his people, even as I believe that God is also going to visit his people here in Barbados as well. And the word of God says that God made a promise to them. Yes, they may have been carried away captivity, but the word of God says they shall return. Amen. And not only shall they return, but they shall return with singing. The Bible says that they shall return or they shall get back on their feet. So I see a people who are coming back, but when they come back, they are coming back with joy. Come on, somebody. The word says that God has made his people a singing people. They are coming back with joy and they are also coming back with singing. I believe that that which has been declared in the word of Almighty God is going to come to pass. I, I remember the word of God says that the Lord have made us. He made the people of God glad. I recall the scripture says that the people of God were made glad. And we often sing that song that says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his gate courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. A very important part of the package of God's salvation to man is singing. It is joy and it is gladness. And in that scripture, I see there's an exchange between God and the man. The redeemed of the Lord receive gladness and sin. And God takes the sorrow and mourning to himself. The Bible says that they flee away. This exchange is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 61. Jesus brought a gift to those in Zion or the people of God and that gift was to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I noticed all those things that produce joy, God says you're going to keep them. And the things that produce Sorrow, he says, you give these things to me. And from this I deduce that the people of God are supposed to be a happy and a joyful people. The Bible tells me in the book of St. Matthew that Jesus made a declaration and so many times we misinterpret this. To mean in the sweet by and by. Jesus said in one of the parables, and he said to those that are faithful, he said, Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And somehow we got a feeling that we can only come into the joy of the Lord in the sweet by and by, or when we die and go to heaven. But I want you to understand that. God wants his people to enter into the sweet by and by and he wants them to do it now. Can I tell you that the moment you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, you stepped into the joy of the Lord. Come on somebody. The moment you receive salvation, 
affliction, you also receive joy. For the Bible tells me in, in the book of Isaiah, it, it says, Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation, and in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. What I understand from this is that God is saying to you, the moment you receive salvation, you also receive joy because joy is coupled with salvation. There is no salvation without joy and on the other hand, there is no joy without salvation. And so when God says, enter into the joy of the Lord, God is saying, come to salvation. When you receive salvation, you receive joy. And then God says that those that have salvation ought to be a happy people. He said, therefore, with joy, or accompanying joy, shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. The Bible tells me if you're going to make it through these times, you need joy. If you're going to make it through the challenges that you're going to experience as a child of God, you need joy. Scripture tells me, yea, all that will live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. And if persecutions are going to come the way of the child of God, you need something in order to go through the persecution. And God says the answer to persecution is joy. Come on. Somebody, if you don't learn to enjoy what you are doing in the midst of persecution, you are going to turn back. Can I tell you that Jesus had joy? The scripture says concerning Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. And today he is sat down. If he did not have the joy of the Lord, he would have never made it through the Garden of Gethsemane. If he did not have the joy of the Lord, he would never have made it on the cross of Calvary. He needed joy. And if he needed joy, I want you to know that you also need the joy of the Lord. The scripture tells me concerning another man of God, the Apostle Paul. There was a prophet that took off his girdle and he bound it all around the man of God Paul and said to him, I receive a word from Almighty God that bonds and affliction await you down there or rather up there in Jerusalem. And he had a choice of staying where he was or going to Jerusalem where the bonds was. But the apostle Paul he said, look, none of these things move me. I am ready to die. I'm ready to be bound. Whatsoever comes my way, I am not prepared to stay here. I am I, I, Jerusalem here. I come. I understand that there is something powerful. There's something. There's a blessing at Jerusalem. And therefore, in spite of what awaits me, I am going to Jerusalem. And it took joy in what he was doing in order to take him to Jerusalem. I hear him also saying, there's going to come a time when I'm going to just, can I use the term, throw in the towel. But he also says, when that time comes, I'm going to have a joy. I'm going to finish my race or finish my course with joy. The Apostle Paul had joy and that's what caused him to make it through his journey. I say to you today, if you're going to make it, you need the joy and the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is going to cause you to make it over every mountain. The joy of the Lord is going to cause you to make it through every valley, through situations, persecutions, afflictions. All of these things are going to come your way. But if you got the joy of the Lord, you're going to make it. How how do I know that joy accompanies salvation? Like I said before, anytime you connect with Jesus 
and you accept Jesus as your Savior, joy accompanies that salvation. In fact, I, I can say that joy comes with Jesus. And I see record in scripture of the birth of Jesus the Bible tells me that there was great joy in heaven for the angels of the Lord appeared unto the shepherds with the news and the news that they brought to the shepherds was behold I bring you Good tidings of great joy. And at the announcement of the birth of Jesus, Scripture tells me suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. The birth or the, announce, the announcing of Jesus initiated much joy in heaven. They, the angels joined and they glorified God, shouted glory to God in the highest. Salvation is always accompanied by joy. The Bible says that when the three kings, we call them the three wise men, when they saw the star and understood that the star had led them to Jesus, that they were exceedingly joyful. It brought them joy. The news of Jesus brought them joy. Can I say to you that when Mary shared the salutation concerning Jesus Christ uh, on her inner side, when she shared with Elizabeth and said to Elizabeth, the Lord has done great things in my life and chosen me. And right now there is on the inside of me a Savior whose name is Jesus. The Bible says that the babe, John, we call him John the Baptist. He was just a babe in the womb of Elizabeth. But the Bible says at the mention of the name of Jesus that he was filled with joy and he received the Holy Ghost. Jesus brings joy. Come on somebody. Joy always accompanies Jesus. The Bible says that Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ. And there was great joy in that city. Every single person that connected with Jesus in a positive way was filled with joy. So I want you to know if you want joy, then connect with Jesus. Scripture tells me, therefore, with joy, our joy will accompany you when you have salvation. I want to say, I know in these times, people are experiencing challenges, pain, hurt. There's frustration, there's loss all over Barbados and all over the world as a result of this pandemic. And it seems as if the joy of the people has withered away. But I've come to tell you that God already spoke a word to his disciples, to Jesus' disciples. When Jesus was on earth, he said to his disciples, he said, look. He said, these things I'm speaking to you, that you might have joy. He said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. In the world, you're going to have challenges. But I'm speaking my joy into you right now because you're going to make it because of my joy. And you know what he says? He says, not only am I speaking joy into you, but I'm also declaring that your joy is going to stay. Nobody is going to take your joy from you. 
if you mind circumstances, you lose your joy. But I want you to know God spoke joy into your life. And not only did he speak joy, but he said, I want the joy to stay. And so I want to say to you, whatsoever you go through today, hold on to your joy. It is the joy of the Lord that's going to cause you to make it. You need joy. And, 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 and the joy of the Lord, the word of God says, it is your strength. And uh, I, I, I recall right now there's a song that we sing. I still have my joy. I still have my joy. After all I've been through, I still have my joy. You're going to go through some challenges as a child of Almighty God, but if there's one thing that you need to keep, that is your joy. You've got to learn to hold on to your joy. And God knowing it, he said, look, with joy, with joy, with joy. If you're going to go, go with joy. If, he said, the only way of making it through life is to make it with joy. Therefore, with joy. Do you know something? Joy is going to keep that praise the Lord in your mouth. Hear me, somebody. He said, therefore, with joy. I'm going to be accompanied by joy. Shall I draw water out of the wells of salvation? And in that day shall I say praise the Lord. In other words, I'm going to be drawing water. But I'm also going to be saying praise the Lord. Hear me somebody. You don't need to be a, in fact, you cannot be a grouchy man of God or woman of God as long as you are a child of God joy is going to follow you. Joy is going to walk beside you. The man of God said I am doing it with joy. How many of you today have that joy? How many of you today are enjoying your salvation? God does not want you to endure salvation but rather he wants you to enjoy salvation. That's why he has given you joy in order to take you over the humps and the bumps that you're going to find in the way. He said, therefore, with joy. Can I carry you back to the passage? He says, the redeemed of the Lord. That means you shall return to Zion with singing. Come on, somebody. You're going to, be, you're going to return with singing. It also says, you shall obtain gladness and everlasting joy shall be upon your head. Everlasting. I want you to believe the word of Almighty God today and know that there's something on your head called everlasting joy. Come on, you, you rest your hand on your head and feel the thing on your head today. It's called everlasting joy. The thing that keeps you going today is called everlasting joy. Anytime you feel down, all you need to do is just stir it up, scratch your head, and the everlasting joy is going to begin to stir up. Come on, somebody. And so I'm saying to you, you don't need, as I said before, to be grouchy and be down, but the message of salvation is one of joy, and God has given you the real rhythm to preach it, to live it, to demonstrate it in this life, especially in these times. Everlasting joy. And today I speak it to you. I speak it not only to you, but I speak it into your life. Receive the joy of the Lord. Walk with the joy of the Lord. And have that praise the Lord in your mouth. Challenges, persecutions, problems all around you but God has given you the vehicle to make it through these times and that vehicle is everlasting joy do you have it today God wants you to receive that everlasting joy God bless you as you connect with the source of joy whose name is Jesus amen the word of God says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endure forever.
hallelujah, I come to you to let you know that joy is available. Can I let you know that the store that produces joy or the store that from this you're going to get joy, the source never is depleted. And God is saying to you, if you connect with Jesus, I'm ready to release that joy into your life. I believe somebody listening to me today, you've been sitting down and you have been concerned and you've been worrying and bothering. You're a child of God, but you've been worrying and fretting. How am I going to make it? And you don't know your next turn. You don't know where to go, what to do. You don't know what's around the next bend and you are worrying. But I come to let you know God is going to give you joy if you connect with him. And right now as I pray, hear me something. The Bible says God is going to release the joy upon your head and if you will agree with me, rest your hand upon your head as I pray. That joy is going to fall right not only upon your head but into your hand as well. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the joy of the Lord that is going to become somebody's strength. My God, I believe that somebody already has joy upon their head, but they don't even know that is there until they are stirred up. In the mighty name of Jesus, I stir up that joy that is upon your head. In Jesus' mighty name. And those of you who are looking for joy, I pray even now as you connect with Jesus, that even as a pipe would connect with a reservoir, that joy would flow through that pipe that is connected between yourself and, and connected with Jesus and that you become a recipient of the joy of Almighty God. I speak the word of God that says joy in the place of sorrow. I speak the word that says beauty in the place of ashes. I speak the word that says sorrow and mourning is going to flee away. And right now I speak the word that says the joy of the Lord shall strengthen you and cause you to make it in Jesus mighty name. You shall not walk around with your head held down not knowing where you're going but even as you connect with almighty God you're going to say even like Jesus ah who for the joy that was set before him you're going to enjoy all that comes your way and not only are you going to enjoy but you're going to enjoy your life and so I speak the joy of the Lord into you I speak a hallelujah into your life I speak a praise the Lord the word of God says when you receive joy you're also going to receive a praise the Lord therefore receive that praise the Lord right now in Jesus mighty name when you leave the presence of almighty God this day you're going to walk around with joy. People are going to see you just smiling. They're going to think you're crazy. It's not that you're crazy. It's that you're connected with joy. And from this day you're going to walk in joy. You're going to enjoy your salvation. You're going to enjoy your life. You're going to enjoy all that you do because God wants you to live a life of joy. Therefore receive it right now in Jesus' mighty name. I know all around the churches the doors are all closed and some, some of your businesses, the workplaces are closed and, and uh, come on, here's some concern. But I speak joy into you in the midst of all these things. And I declare that you finish your course like the Apostle Paul with joy in Jesus' name. Therefore, receive the joy of the Lord. Not any joy, but the everlasting joy. The joy of the Lord shall be upon you. And I say to you, it shall last. Because God calls it everlasting joy. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. God bless you. Enjoy your life. Say hallelujah. Say praise God. And continue to walk. In that company, or rather in the company of that companion whose name is Joy. Amen.
from all of us here at Chalky Mount Wesleyan Holiness Church, we say thank you for joining us again this week. And don't forget, comment, like, subscribe, and share. Join us next time.